Yes, um, what was the total of those invoices? Is that what I'm seeing in the financial report? Um, you'll have to. Mary? Yes. Can you answer Donnie's question? I didn't hear Donnie's question. What was the total on these purchase orders? Um, do you have your cover sheets? They were in your box. Okay, it's not the same as this? We're not on Yeah. Is okay, it? you want... Okay, well, first of all, these are future this is, this purchase is orders, this mm -hmm. is not past purchase okay. orders. Okay. This is approving the minutes. Okay, approving the minutes. So vote. Okay. Please. Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Item number three, general fund purchase orders and street and alley purchase orders. That's probably where you're that's where, I'm, that's where I'm at. Now, did Mary answer your question? No. Um, okay. Mary, we gotta ask that question again. Okay. Sorry, now we're on the right page. You're trying, those are future purchase orders that mm -hmm. have not been paid. You're looking right. at financial statements that have already been paid. Okay, that's been paid. How much are these totaled up to all together? You, you have the reports in your box as well. Okay, so. So this, one's this one's 17. Right, but remember there were two sets because I had several that were pending. Mm -hmm. So here's another set. Did you give them both of those, Donna? I have both of them. Okay, thank you. My, my question is, do we have enough money? Is there enough money in the account to pay these? No, there's not enough money in the account okay. right now to pay those. Right, my, that's my question. Okay. And by law, we can't commit ourselves to pay something when we don't have money in the account to pay it, can we? If we don't have enough money in the account to pay the bills, we cannot approve paying all the bills if there's not money there to pay them. I guess if you want to go through and approve them individually, you can. But, but how do you do that legally when you don't have enough money in the well, account? You go through individually and cover the ones that you can cover in the account. Mm -hmm. if you want to do that. I mean, if you don't want to do a mass approval. We can't legally do a mass approval, can we? Yeah, we do it every month. Well, I think you can. I think you're yeah. okay. You don't need it as long as whenever the time comes to make the payment that the money is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you can't, if it's not there, you're in trouble. We're assuming well, it'll be there. Well, then you don't send the bill in or the check in. I, I would agree, but I mean, there, there are purchase orders that, that have to be paid. Right, I agree. So, I mean, I, so how, how, how do we, by law, we cannot encumber debt if there's not money there to pay it? This is more of a question I think you probably want to ask the CPA because this falls more in the financial side. But I think you're okay from a legal standpoint in going ahead and okaying the payment of them, but I would not pay them unless you had the money in the account. But I think that's more of an accounting question and not, not a legal question. And, I, and it's, okay, it's okay to go ahead and approve paying them. But if the clerk doesn't have the funds available to make the payments, then she doesn't. She will not. Doesn't need to make the payments. So we can approve it, but she can't pay it if there's no money. Right, which she's not going to do anyway. Okay, because because when I look at this under Title 11, 17 to 11, it says no expenditure or encumbrance may be authorized or made by any officer or employee which exceeds the fund balance for any fund. Right, but you still you still need to make sure you take care of the purchases. Right, but if there's no money there to take care of it. But we've and already made it. the purchases. Well, yes. That's what we've, we we can't legally made. make a purchase without approving it. You can't. Well, I mean, there, there, there's there's a final. Yeah, with the PO number. But if there's no money there, and we get to June, we can't carry it over in the next year either. Okay. So we're breaking the law when we do no, that. I, I disagree with that. That, that I, think, I think you're missing a step. And again, I, I think this is more of a question. If you're concerned about whether or not our accounting practices are not correct, I think this is one where you call the CPA that handles our audits for the town and ask, this is what the situation is. Mm -hmm. Are we in trouble from a financial standpoint? But we haven't been audited in five years. Yeah, yeah. When was we last audited? 2009 was our last audit. You didn't audit. say well, the last time you were audited, Donnie. You, you didn't call him and ask him a question. What I'm saying, though, is we haven't been audited. And okay, well, I, I thought we'd been audited. No. Okay. We have been audited, but the yeah. years that they audited us was from years in the past. We're not up to date. We're way behind. Okay. But yeah. we, have, we have been audited within the last year. Okay. Is, it, well, yeah. is it a complete audit for what year? Yes. From what year? Um, I'm not sure what, what year it was. We'll have to pull it up and that, see. That's it's what I've asked for in 2009 is the last one I can find. Okay. 
Okay. I'm trying. I'm, I'm asking a question. I'm trying to get some clarification here to make sure that I can legally vote yes or no because the law says if I vote for it, we don't have the money to pay for well, it. Well, our city attorney's opinion is yes, you can. Yeah. If you want to get a second opinion, mm -hmm. you can. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, opinion that, is yes. that, 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 this is the way that it's done, generally speaking. But again, this is yeah. more. Of a, this is more. This falls more on the financial side mm -hmm. of things than, than it does in, in the legal side of things. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is I don't want the clerk write the check for the money we can't cover. Right. But as long as we have the money, then you know, go ahead and write the check to cover it. And we have to approve. And who's going to who's going to determine which bills gets paid then? I would assume that that would be the clerk's job. Okay. So that and, takes and, that and takes and our that takes our responsibility away from us in determining what gets paid. I think everything that we buy needs to get paid. If we have made that purchase, why would we sit in this and decide what get? Well, my, my point is, is, is we're going in the hole every month. We're buying this and, and, and selling uh, this to us in good faith. So we've got to figure out, if you keep doing that, you, you're not going to have enough money at the end of the fiscal year, and then what do you do? Well, if, if, there, if there are purchases that, that need to be approved, they need to be brought before the board. Right. I agree with that. But, it, I mean, I'm unaware of a, a situation where we've been writing hot checks. Well, it's not necessarily no. hot checks. We just haven't been paying other bills in order to pay other Well, ones. if you want to get with the supervisors before they get a PO, then maybe that's Jackie, what you Jackie, that's not what I'm actually referring to. We didn't pay our insurance payments for how many months paying other bills, and then we were behind on our insurance, and no, we're still behind on our insurance. We've been doing so that. my point is, at one point, we have to get caught up or we're breaking the law. I make a motion to approve these purchase orders. We have a motion. <clears throat> second. And a second. Any more discussion? Both. Well, we've got executive session for it. <clears throat> Both. No. Yes. Bonnie? No. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Item number four, public forum. Anyone here for the public forum? Uh, I guess I am. Okay. Sure. Um, Could you sorry. please stand when you speak, please, so we can hear you? I'm sorry. Can you please stand up so oh, we can hear you? My name Thanks. is uh, Lahoma Robo. For those of you who don't know who I am, and uh, what I represent routinely is uh, I'm a self-proclaimed animal advocate for the city of Tallahanna. And um, we have our uh, animal control advisory committee meetings, which the city has granted uh, us the... Uh, sanctioned to conduct every last Wednesday of the month. Um, uh, Ms. Gregson had attended one of our meetings and has been unable to attend since. Uh, and uh, uh, Donnie has attended one of our meetings and we have about four people that are regular members of the group, although that, not that many uh, you know, have been attending. But what we're working on now is a um, animal control ordinance, a proposed thing for people to look over just as points of discussion. And um, also um, just uh, trying to find some way to address in this interim before we get a replacement for our animal control officer, some kind of mechanism of dealing with more severe cases of abuse um, in this town. Now, it's my understanding, unless I'm corrected, that the police have the authority to investigate actual animal cruelty. And that's fairly specific in our state statutes. We don't need an animal control officer for that. And we will be making reports to your police and hoping that we have the support to address those specific issues to go and talk to the people. And we recognize also that the ones who do the worst about uh, taking care of their dogs are people who have problems. And by problems, I mean they're not able to think because of either substance abuse issues or some bona fide organic neurological problems, and those are some of our worst cases. So that's why we need the uh, support of the police to address these issues. It's not just people just don't care, they're just not capable of doing it. So we can use your support for those. And also, for uh, just as an aside, this is, I'll make this very brief, um, we would like, as citizens of, of this meeting, uh, when we're confused about the process, and I say we, there's three or more of us that have discussed this. Uh, when you go into your meetings, I'm assuming now you're talking, you're uh, outlining the motions that you're going to be addressing in your administrative meeting? No, ma'am. Okay, what gets discussed back there? When we get to the executive session, we will tell you that before we go into that session. 
That's actually on the agenda. It reads on the agenda what we discuss. Okay. And that's the so, only thing we discuss in executive session. Okay, so when, when you have that discussion, we'll be getting a summation then of kind of what the yes. discussion is when yes. you come back, yes. and then we'll know what, what's been moving. Yes. Okay, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else here for the public forum? I am. Yes, ma'am. Along the same line. Um, she's right. We have a problem with dogs. Can you say, tell us? Tell her who you are. I'm sorry, I'm LaDonna Popolo, for the record. <laughs> I recently bought a house in Callahan, and um, today I was charged by some type of bulldog, not a bull, what is it, not, pit bull. Bull, not a pit bull. But it's my neighbor's dog, it got out of the yard. Mm -hmm. um, I was in fear for my life. I was out in the corner of my yard, cornered in my yard by my neighbor's dog, and the neighbor was gone. Um, I called the police department, Jack came out. The dog went back in his yard and stayed there. Um, but when Jack arrived, went into that person's driveway, it was very aggressive towards, towards him. And he didn't speak to anyone the first time. Um, so he left, I was going about my business in my house. Um, my mother, who was elderly, mm -hmm. came to my driveway. The dog started barking. About that time, the people came home. I ran out, begged my mother to stay in the car until I could make sure this dog was contained. Um, I don't want to live that way. <laughs> did you? Did you actually correct me if I'm wrong, Jana? But does she not need to file a complaint, a written complaint? I wasn't aware of that. Okay. I'm, I'm asking now yeah, that's if, that's, exactly what if they someone need to can help me so out. So who do I file that with? You yeah. get the police department. The police department. Okay. You have to actually file a written complaint. Okay. And then, it, am I right? I believe Jack wrote this guy a citation. Cool. Yeah, Did you write in the citation for that? Yeah, I didn't discuss anything else with Jack. A am I wrong by saying she needs to file a written complaint concerning well, that? Well, you didn't have to with what I picked it up. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I was okay. wrong with that. All right. So he, he was issued, issued a citation yes, and yeah. he will appear yeah. before the judge. Okay. Okay. I definitely understand what you're talking about and we do need to get a right. I mean, grasp I'm, I'm, on that. I'm, I'm, I just bought the house scary. a couple of weeks ago. Yes. I, my mother comes there. I'm working in the yard. I, I, you should not have to. And what is your address? It's 303 Roberts. And what about the other dogs? Yeah, that and in, in addition to that, because I did discuss this with Dawn okay. earlier, um, I chased four stray dogs out of my yard today. One was a pregnant mama running, running around in my backyard. I went through the window, I had the window open, chased her out. Two more little brown dogs came in one gate, and I ran out and yelled at them, and they went out the other. And then another little brown dog was headed in my yard, and I chased him out. I have a fence. I have gates that I keep open so I can go in and out of my yard. Don't, if I owned a dog, I would take every effort to maintain that that dog is, is either in a fenced area, tied up in my yard, in my house, and, and you know, this dog, this dog was not a, you know, run across the road, wagging his tail, oh, hi, you got a snack for me, dog. This dog meant business. Well, we're praying tonight <laughs> that maybe we will be able to hate, to hire someone that okay. will help us get a grip on them. That would be great, because if there was someone else I could call, and it's I mean, I mean Jack did his job, concern. but if there was someone who was assigned well, to that, that particular right. And no telling oh. what might could happen before someone could get there. Well, and we don't exactly. want that situation. Exactly. And I talked with someone again today in the little restaurant there in Dells. He was telling about his wife being attacked by a dog while she was walking down the street. Up in the same Meadow Heights area. Two weeks ago when it was snowing outside, I couldn't walk I couldn't drive down the street. There was a dog in heat and there was fifteen dogs in the middle of the road for a week. For a week. Yeah. I mean, I could go outside without driving around dogs. Well, I'm really glad you came to the meeting tonight and brought it to the council's attention okay. what a big issue we have it going is. on. And that's I just one street in the town. We one street. Yeah, we appreciate you coming and letting <laughs> that's us That's mentioned a little brown dog that pees on my tire at the Easy Market every time I get gas. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and hopefully thank that you. will never happen to you. Thank you. Yeah. 
We need to do everything we can to try to keep that from happening. <coughs> Anyone else for the public forum? Can I ask one thing on that? Yeah. <coughs> Jack, since that dog um, was aggressive, was the owners made aware now that that would be classified as an aggressive dog and it would have more security? Well, the dog normally, he keeps, Teddy keeps it on the track. I don't know what it was doing today, but uh, he had it in a pen. And he told fence. me that he was going to put it uh, back in the fence and secure that so that it wouldn't be kicked out again. Padlock the fence or something so that dog could not get out. Yeah. It and always helps to, to you know, lock it. Our ordinance well, has a specific size of fence and things on there for an aggressive dog. Yeah, he's got it's about a four foot fence or maybe a five foot that he's got up before the yard. Okay. And he said he's going to shut them, he's going to shut the main gate. And I invited him, you know, we come up again, it's going to be the same thing. Right. So, you know, he said he'd shut the main Who gate. Who deems that an aggressive dog? Does the the ordinance, does the the ordinance has it in there if the dog is attacking. If it's trying to attack, yes, that's how the ordinance is written. Right. So it's that already been very, very specific on that. Not it's a dangerous dog. Right. It has to do more than just scare somebody. Which you know, I, I agree that you know nobody should have to deal with that. Right. But we need to look at how it's written because dangerous dogs. There's a lot of criteria in there about what that have to be met before you can designate a dog. So she felt like she was getting ready to be bitten. Right. That's yes. an aggressive dog. I mean, she well, couldn't get out of the corner of her fence. Yeah, the ordinance is very. Maybe we need to look at rewording some of those yes. ordinances. But thank you so very much. And chain dogs are the ones that are likely, likely to be most aggressive. An unneutered uh, male chain dog will be mean every time it's been chained up for a long time. Well, I, I will say they do have it normally inside a closed. Security. But you don't want to go out every day wondering if but, someone's And it barks at me every time I walk out my right. door. I hear it. He's right across right. the street. But I didn't know that he was right. loose until I was too far from my sure. house yeah. for safety. That's scary. <laughs> Anybody else got questions? Rhonda, you guys more questions? No, no. Okay. Any more for public forum? Okay. Attorney's report. Sean, do you have anything for us? Everything I have is going to be hit on some aspect okay. of your agenda tonight. Okay. Item number six, financial report. Anybody got any questions for Mary on the financial report? Or Mary, do you have anything for us? I do. The following information is from the month of February 2014 for the town of Town and Fund. Revenues totaled fifty-one thousand four hundred twenty-two dollars eighty cents. Expenditures totaled fifty-two thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars and thirty-six cents. For a shortfall of $1,102.56. One noteworthy item, a couple of noteworthy items I wanted to point out to y'all that were a little bit out of the ordinary on the second page. Under continued expenditures, you'll see about halfway down the line item of fire maintenance. That $1,020 actually represents the annual contribution that we make to our volunteer firefighters pension. And then also the second to the last number on the expenditures, you'll see that crazy number with swimming pool water. Remember last month we talked about some um, outstanding bills that Liddell and I were getting cleaned up. That's just one of those old ones. It's money that stays within the company, just getting that one cleaned up. And um, that's really all I have to share with you out of the ordinary. Are there any questions? But we only became thousand dollars in the red because you were able to transfer money from public works right right that's exactly right the six thousand dollars which is the last line item on revenues um, represents operating transfers from public works and remember also that because we are on a modified cash basis of accounting this simply represents cash in and cash out in other words if there are unpaid bills at the end of the month because we're not on accrual basis they're not reflected in the bottom line of this okay Go ahead now, go ahead. When we were having our discussion, there was a larger amount that you were telling me that we were short each month. That's right. And that's exactly the difference in the cash and accrual basis. Um, we basis. were talking a lot more than $1,000. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. That's my point. Uh -huh. Absolutely. So what is not covered that we're still showing you? What's not covered in this particular report would be the payroll taxes, both current and past. And the reason it's not covered because we are required to do cash basis since that cash didn't actually leave the company, it's not reflected on the report. So how much is our uh, monthly payroll 
um, taxes? Well, I'm going to speak for both companies combined, okay? okay. Um, it's just shy of $20,000. And so we have that on a monthly basis. Monthly basis. And in addition to that, we also have a multitude of past due amounts for which um, we don't have the funds to pay right now. So every month we have to pay $20,000 and that's Social Security, Medicare, that's what we're talking? Right. Um, it's actually, some, some of it is an expense and some of it is money that we hold out of the employee's check and remit on their behalf. Some of it represents our per portion of the payroll tax expense. But yes, they are the type of expenditures that you're mentioning. Okay, so if we took that $20,000 each month that you mm -hmm. cannot meet plus this $1,000 uh, and then the next one is going to be that. Little Plus little public thousand. works. So what about $26,000? Actually, Rhonda, when I gave you that number of $20,000, that was all in company. Okay, so it's not in addition to these. And, you know, it's also a little hard because we haven't had what we call a regular month yet in the sense that occasionally I'm still getting hit with some old bills that I'm trying to um, keep people at bay. And then also the fact that we have made some radical changes in the collection procedures in the utility office. So we have seen some increases in collections. But based on the best data that I have available at my finger, uh, fingertips as of today, that was a number I felt comfortable giving to you with a little bit of cushion built in. Okay. Okay. Then my other question to you is if we cannot pay the entire payroll taxes, we should at least be paying what is taken out of the employee's check. Okay, if that's how you want to direct me that's to pay. That's how I feel. Okay. I to, okay. Discuss that with everybody. And that's, that's fine. If that's how y'all want to direct me to pay the bills, keep in mind that if we do that, there will be other expenses that we are not paying. Okay, so it'll be up to you guys to, to pick and choose if we're not going to pay utilities, chemical, garbage pickup. Those are the type of expenses that I'm paying. But it is against the law not to pay it. Absolutely, it's against the law not to pay it. And don't we have one penalty that we paid, a $20,000 penalty to the IRS that we've already paid? Not to my knowledge. I haven't cut a check for $20,000. We do, do we not have another, do we have a penalty assessed to us right now that we're trying right, to pay? Right, right, that I have requested abatement of, and I haven't gotten a decision on that yet. And it's how much? Um, I'd have to pull the numbers on you. They're just not at the But it's, it's above 20000 is it not? Mm, the penalty part, I don't think, is above 20000 but it probably wouldn't be that far off. Okay. And that's actually what's interesting about that penalty is that penalty is not based on any failure to pay tax. It's a based on failure to file reports and then willfully ignoring repeated notices that were addressed to the clerk treasurer. So when I implored the IRS to give us a reprieve from those penalties, I based it on the fact that the council was unaware. The council was not ignoring the notices. The clerk treasurer was not ignoring the notices. In many cases, not opening the mail. And so I implored them on that basis. Now the problem I have with the IRS in terms of civil penalty abatement, usually in my career that would be kind of a slam dunk thing, especially because because we are a municipality. Because this municipality has a history, has a history. of non-payment, then they are much more reluctant to work with me and cooperate as I've been able to with previous entities. And the penalty is over above and beyond what you actually owe. The penalty is, a, is tacked on to what you're owed, what your taxes are owed. Yes. Right. So it could very well be twenty thousand dollars. How much do we owe? Do you want me to answer questions from the public, or do you want to recognize them? Why not? I think that. Um, do you know what that amount is? I don't have. I just want to. I just want to make sure I understand the procedure. I don't have that. I'm not trying to avoid the question. I just want to make sure if I'm supposed to take questions from them or ask directly by you. I don't have that exact number in my fingertips right now. I have, for example, with state unemployment. Um, reports that haven't been filed literally in years with payroll data that I've been forced to recreate because the records both on the computer and paper were incomplete and so every month between the normal daily duties that I'm working on but that doesn't matter to you Francis in other words I don't have a total amount no I don't for the sake of time if you want to just get with her about that absolutely matter, like to answer those questions absolutely I'm up to date on my reports with the IRS but not on my tax payments Okay. What? Anything else for us? Okay. This uh, swimming pool water, is that a final payment? We're through with that? Well, it's That's an old. It's I mean, an, it's an we're old. up to date. Yes. We don't owe any more on that. I mean, uh, according to what it was presented to me by the utility clerk, no, we don't. We'll start running water there again. That's money that stays within the company. Let me ask you a quick question on that. 
since that's payment to ourselves, mm -hmm. why can't we put that one aside and pay something a little more important right now? Well, I don't think you're understanding how it works, Bonnie, no, because when I pay money. that, I turn right around and transfer it. Transfer it back. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It just, it just <laughs> so I can just well, ignore the bill helps, or I can clean it, it up off the books. The records. Yeah, so she has it prepared for the audit. And for yeah, I'm just cleaning But my it up point is books. on that one, we can delay it easier than we can delay payroll taxes. You're not understanding what I'm saying, Donnie. That money doesn't leave the company. I pay it to Public Works, and Public Works turns right around as an operating transfer and, and puts it back, it back into the one. general fund. It doesn't leave the company, so it's not going to allow me to pay another one or not to pay okay. another one. Okay. It's interfund transfers. Okay. Thanks, Mary. You bet. I'd like to bring it to the council's attention too that all your supervisors are here which you requested and I'm sure that you've probably gone over the reports it's not on the agenda to ask them any questions about the reports I think we should probably do that in the future because we haven't had it on there before I appreciate but everybody coming yeah, I do too. they are here you might come up with a question for them later all right I'm Jackie seven. Jackie yes. can I ask a favor sure. uh, can we move number 20 up right now since these ladies are from Poto and would like to get number home 20, or not number 20, number, um, where is it? Yeah, number 20, yeah. That's all right. And, and also, after that, could we move, uh, I believe, 12 up to discuss it since Cal's here? Because we wait till that, we're going to be pretty late. It's that the council, the council likes to do. Let's go for number 20 right now. That's for number 20? Okay. We'll, we'll go. Lucky winner, number 20. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we came last month and we talked to the city council about proposing a passing of a youth access ordinance on tobacco sales in the city of Tallahassee. And I think we kind of, oh, did a preliminary yes and approval for it, but we were just coming back to make sure if there were any questions or any concerns that you had that we could answer. questions this was the one on where we say there's an ordinance against it so if a establishment is selling tobacco the city receives the fine and not the state correct exactly. correct and, and yes. there, there was we another deal too that wasn't totally there. that's true. not totally correct okay do you enlighten us now we get 35 percent of 35 we don't get the we have to pay some of that but that is when, the, when it is just governed by the state we, we can't we can't increase the fees or my reading of the state statute basically says we don't need to do this. I mean that's the bottom line. The state law is already out there. Well the state I'm sorry the state law is out there for a youth access ordinance which is state law. This is a local ordinance that is mirroring state law but it's on a local level. Oh, there are multiple too, okay. there are multiple communities within Oklahoma that do it and they do receive 100% of the tickets that are fine within the city. Also, I talked with um, Joe Daniels. Daniels from the ABLE Commission. And if the ABLE Commission comes in and does reward reminder visits that we talked about, um, then they, when they come in and put their penalty upon, which is $500, and it can either be toward the business, the person who's selling, or the person who's purchasing, more, more, more likely it is from the business and the person who is selling. But when they receive that fine, those fines from the ABLE Commission then actually will be returned back to the city as well. Now I'm not 100% sure if it's all of it or if it's a portion of it because they have to also, from the ABLE Commission. We have fines for both of those in the town of Tallahassee now. Yes. We may not have been enforcing them, but we have those fines set now that we can enforce and we get 100% of it. But that's our fines. That's not part of right. the fine. This from is April. our fines. Right. right. This is, I, I guess. I, that yes. I was unaware. This is what, our I, what I was forwarded was this this proposed ordinance, which I then went and compared with the state statute. And there are portions of the ordinance that things are missing. 
uh, that the state statute has that I mean, if you're going to adopt an ordinance, I'd also bring in the, the, the sign requirement, the notice uh, and acknowledgement by the employee's requirement. But candidly, that's already all there through the state statute, and the police department's going to enforce the state statute. And there's still a requirement, even in this ordinance, of reporting to the ABLE Commission uh, what's going on. And my reading of the statute is that, that we only get 35% of the fine. On the, on the one that is the, on the state level. But the, the, the state statute also says we cannot do anything in addition to... You're not doing it in addition to. That's what we would talk about when we're talking about preemption, when we're talking about that... The city can supersede. We can't do that, and we know that. This is something that this was approved by the Oklahoma City Municipal or Oklahoma, the State of Oklahoma Municipal League by all of the city councils. They get together. Their attorneys get together. It's all 100% on the up and up. There's not anything that you know they're trying to be misleading about. That is everything that the Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust has told us. And there are many, many communities within the state that use this. Would it make you feel better instead of doing it up and down to table this and get some clarification? Yeah, what I was about to suggest is if you guys could get me whatever documentation you have that says that we would get 100% of the fine, I think I'd be more in favor for it because where we're at right now, we still have to do all the, all the, all the compliance parts. And so I, I don't see the benefit of having a state, a city ordinance when I've got a state statute out there that also covers it. So if you've got something it, it, that directs the able commission to then give back more than what they're taking on the fine, in other words, if, if they're going to give back, if we, if we adopt an ordinance and they're going to give back 20% of the fine, if you guys have got something like that, then, we, then, then it becomes beneficial for us to do that because now we're getting more than what we would be getting before. Right, and that is the whole purpose of this, is that the cities are then going to be able to benefit from fines. The $100 for the first offense, $200 for the second, $300 for the third. But what I'm saying is, is that the, the, the last statute, uh, the last part of the statute, that's what it talks about the fine, and there's nothing in there that says that if the city adopts an ordinance that they get 100% of the fine. It still says that only they only get 35% of the fine. So if you have if you have an able commission regulation, or if you got some sort of letter from the able commission that says if the city adopts an ordinance, then they can get 100% of the fine. Then I would recommend, yeah, let's go ahead and, and adopt an ordinance because then we're getting we're getting $100 instead of 35. Right. So. Right. And that was the whole purpose of, of, of now, doing it our, yeah. our fines for a minor possession is $177. Mm -hmm. Our fine for a retailer selling is $215, which is more than what you're talking about that the state yes. has. But, but that's when our officer goes out and does it. But right. this is this is able deal. Right. So, I, I, no, 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 no. If you no, have no, the no, no, it's still the officers enforcing the law. It's still the officers. And he's but, still but, also enforcing the state statute. But didn't you say that uh, they do come in and do some courtesy checks and stuff? Able, and Able Commission will come in and do reward reminder visits if they know that this, the, the youth access ordinance is on a local level. Well, they do them regardless. But if they are aware and they have the documentation that the city of Tallahanna has a local youth access ordinance in place, they then do give money back to the city for those. And plus it allows us to apply for grants. Uh, to yes, use on health. That was what we health. also talked about, you know, uh, you know, the baby steps of being certified healthy. If these are in place. Well, I'll make, we'll I'll make a, I'll make a motion that we table this. We are in well, the ordinance. I think month. what needs to happen is you and Sean. Well, that's what I'm saying. Table it and, and uh, right. get, get the information to it. it. We just haven't signed it yet. Okay. So it sounds to me like they got a little bit more work to do. But okay. Oh, well, that was the reason we came, is because we wanted to know if you had any. So we'll do no action. So. Yeah, no action. We appreciate you following up with us very much on that. Y'all just get the stuff from Riddell. Okay. Riddell can get it from me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Okay. Can, can, we, can, can we have your email address or something? Riddell, so we can. Oh, she's got it back right there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Back to item number seven. Okay. Back to item number seven. Approve or reject the removal of the tree behind Hoodie Creek Hotel. There is a tree behind the hotel there that's actually in the alley. Uh, Carolyn and Essex Webb has came and 
um, actually how it all started, they were just inquiring about someone that might could take it down for them. Um, while we started researching that, we realized it was in the middle of the alley. So now it's came back on the city. Uh, we do have an estimate to not remove that tree, but to, it looks like to cut it back and to haul it off, which is $1,500. don't know if you've looked at it or not, but it is leaning. And if there comes a storm, it probably is going to take out part of that hotel and possibly take a lot. It is a big tree. It but that, that alley's been used for personal use, is it not? What kind of tree is it? It's an elm tree. It's, on, it's between my property I, and their no property. I knew that was an alley until just recently. But, but, it, so but it's, it's, it's not an open alley. It's, it. it's an elm. It's an elm tree. And the reason it's leaning is because it's next to utility pole and the utility companies cut everything off of one side. No. Yes, it is, Jackie. That's leaning. The roots are up out of the ground. Uh, if you look at the high line next to it, you can see all the trees, limbs cut on one side because it, PSO came the, in and cut the all the limbs. The council just needs to decide if they want to address that. Uh, and we tried to get several events on it. Huh? It says, do yeah. you good site behind sewer pond? Yeah, that's where we allow people to dump things in there if it can be burned, if they ask for permission. It has to be stuff that can be burned. Oh, yes. oh, they're taking, I got it. I thought you were saying there. that was a super fun. No, right. they're taking it back. They're, they're going to haul it we back. We did ask for several people to gotcha. bid that job that had insurance, and that's the only that's the only bid that we can get for return. And if it causes property damage, though, and it falls into somebody mm -hmm. else's area, whoever's area it falls in is responsible, responsible for the insurance on it, not the city. I mean, I'm just saying. Because I think it's I've been, been, a it's like been brought that. to the city's attention, and I so see. we have to address that. City guys, is this something more beyond what you can handle if you look it's, at the tree? It's a big tree. I think you, Terry, would trim it down to where somebody could cut it down. It requires somebody that has insurance, usually, if it's someone through the Body city. That, I don't know that he could. I don't know. If he could we couldn't let volunteers trim it. Trim it. Uh, we couldn't let volunteers for a certification trim it. I, we never have in the past. That's up to the council. Well, at $1,500, I don't see how we can do anything right now. I think we need to. You just have to think about if it falls, yeah. if it damages their livelihood, plus possibly kill someone. That's what you need to keep in mind if you. Well, I'd be willing to work with it because it borders me too. Of course, it's not going to fall on me, but I'm willing to pay for half of a bucket if Essex and I want to get together and, and start trimming it. We can do that. But to save the city $1,500 right now when we're going in the hole, I think we need to look at that. So I think maybe if we could table it till next month and I can talk to Essex and see if we can figure a way this to do it. This was supposed to be our last month's meeting and it got missed, so we're already behind on it. I'm very trim that tree where I can get it down without killing somebody. Mm -hmm. And he would trim that's the PSO. And he ought to be able to trim that one to where we can get it down without spinning out. Especially since it's technically part of their problem because of the utility. Yeah. yeah. It's part of their problem at this point. Which they are willing to pay part of that. Part of this? Yes. But it is on the city's property. It is the city's problem. But, but then again, the city property is being used for private use. You'd have to talk to Sean about that. I don't know the laws on that. Isn't okay. it? I mean, and it was just brought to our attention that it's an alley. I mean, they didn't bring it to our attention. The city brought it to our attention. Keith brought it to our attention. Keith brought it to our attention. It was in the alley. The people at Hootie Creek did not know it was in the alley. And we're not using. It's the a alley. closed. It's a closed alley. When was the last time we used the alley? Sixty years ago, maybe. How many? Sixty. Sixty. The park, the park actually goes through the alley. The half, half alley goes through the park. Mm -hmm. is actually uh, yeah, with the alley. I, I can make a really strong argument that they, they, they have, whoever's using the alley for private purposes, they've got it first uh, through adverse possession, mm -hmm. and it's, it's really their land now, not ours. Yeah. I mean, I, I can make that argument. So I'm not saying that I win it, but I, I, it's definitely one I can pull. I can definitely out there. I mean, if we haven't used the thing in 60 years. Um, if that, so if that tree did fall and we were sued or something like that because we didn't address that because we were asked, 
Are you saying you could win that case because of that? <laughs> I never said You're just saying you could argue that case. case. Okay. Do we have it's, a not good a, case. it's not a cut and dry. Do we have a good case? Uh, you have a defendable case. A defendable that, 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 that's case. what you're I got asking you. me. I got you. you have a defendable case if something happens. What would the council like to do? No action. I'll talk to Essex and see if we can find a private solution. What would the, what would the rest of the council like to do? I think we need to research it a little bit more to see if we can find another way. I'm also wondering if when the AEP comes by during the summer, trimming trees, if we couldn't use part Let's of that. Let's get a motion idea. on it, either a yes or no motion, so we can move on. And if we do a no motion, then put it back on the agenda later. You can do, you can do the same thing with just no action, could you not? Um, we put it on the agenda to approve or reject, so. Well, we did the other one on there, too, and you wanted to table it. So. so is are we telling them that we're, we're going to research it some more and look at it and try to figure out the best solution so there is no motion okay we'll move on item number seven no motion may i ask a quick related question on trees sure when they come on okay. go ahead go ahead <laughs> when when uh, <laughs> Scared about that my mother was here. <laughs> when, when, they come by, when they come by to cut the trees, and, you know, and they do that lopsided cut, they'll cut the seven year old trees and shear them off on one side, and that really does jeopardize them. Do we have to give them the authorization to, to do that? Can we say no? You can yes, yes. sign a release. I've I I done this on my own property, Lahoma. There's one tree that is growing into the area, right. and I say trim just the amount you need to clear that line, and that's all I give you permission to trim. And then allows my family to go and trim the other side to match so that tree doesn't become lopsided. Oh, good, okay. You thank have you. to sign the release, and they'll try to tell you you can't. But <coughs> right. Personally, I have done it. Okay, thank you very much. Item number eight, approved or reject placing a stop sign at 7th and Roberts. Where's 7th and Roberts? Carol James has called and asked this to be put on the agenda. It's right down from Bell's Kitchen. We've already got two stop signs on She said that, it don't just we? became very dangerous for the people living in the neighborhood. Actually, the lady Is 7th and Cross Street? She, she's right there at that. Yes. Is 7th Church Street? Roberts and Bell? No. No, it would be an so it would be a block up Seventh and Church Street from Church Street. Just it's like a very very short block even. Yeah, it's a real short. And we've got one there at uh, what is that street? What is that street, Rodney? We got two. I got two on Roberts well, already. Would it hurt to put another one there? Well, <laughs> it's it's technically kind of a thorough thir thir true street. Uh, what has the police department observed? Has there been wrecks at this intersection? We want to just maybe patrol it a little bit extra for a month or see what happens. And Can I make a motion to place Just a second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've seen in the morning when kids are getting ready to get on the bus, when people are leaving for work, I've seen the kids almost get run over because they race from the four-way on, uh, they were on that one four-way towards Bell kitchen, Bell's Kitchen, and it's like it's a straight shot, so it does get a lot faster. And in the morning about between 7 and 7.30, it gets really fast through there. So, I mean, I know you can't, I don't, I don't know if you could put a slow during certain hours, you know, because the kids loading and unloading, that might help, you know, because, you know, slow children's crossing or something. And we all know stop signs aren't going to yeah. stop all the time. Well, I mean, you slow can put that look at that stop sign. There's bar out there. So we're here to... Yeah. So what would, what would the police department suggest? That we patrol it more or more stop signs everywhere? We have a motion on the floor to... What would you want to do? Stop sign. We've had a four-way stop sign at Seventh and Roberts. We have a motion. Would you consider any alternatives, like like she said, putting a sign to slow down during certain hours or something like that? I don't that? think that's going to do any better than a than a stop. I think that will be less efficient than a stop sign, actually. 
Why don't the police just uh, mm -hmm. monitor that a little bit more and write a few tickets? Right. I, second, I second that motion. <laughs> Any more discussion? I, I had, You're I saying still, he's saying monitoring. I was still way. waiting on the recommendation of the police department. Oh, he said that you do or you do it's, it's whatever you are. Whatever you are. So a motion and a second. We just enforce the law. But Donnie? No. Donna? No. Rhonda? I'm gonna say no. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Can you let Carol James know tomorrow with that motion bill, please? Thank you. Item mm -hmm. number nine, mm -hmm. discussion mm -hmm. action on hybrid wolves and other animals. We have an issue with hybrid wolves. One in particular, uh, they are legal in the state of Oklahoma. However, if you have one, you don't need a, re a permit. But I believe if you have two, and I have that, you have to have a permit to have the wolf hybrids. Wolves are wolf hybrids. Um, we've just been having, we've had in the last few weeks, we've had um, four calls. Three tickets. How many have you written on? Uh, three. Three tickets. And he has three previous. Yes. And he has three previous. He had a warrant. Um, I just need to know what to do with the wolves. We Our animal ordinance covers vicious animals, but um, some cities and counties are doing away with allowing them to have the wolf hybrids, wolves and wolf hybrids in the city limits, or they are limited in it. To like one and they cannot fit, uh, breed. I, may I weigh in on this since it's my interest area? Um, I think that uh, we, we have to make some determinations uh, about who constitutes a kennel like a breeding kennel and how that would be subject to the uh, purview of the state on its criteria for a kennel and see if those things can be met. I, I think well, the problem is, is the wolves are vicious, and right. they have attacked right. several right. animals. And I'm totally aware of that. Right in front of their owners. And my suggestion would be to do outlaw them all together or to limit them. Well, I guess I, I would prefer that as a citizen. I would prefer that because I've been, I've been complaining about those wolves for quite some time. Right. And, uh, you know, I've just been waiting for them to get on somebody's little kid walking by trying to pet them or something, and they'll tear it up like they did that little dog down the street from me. I'm aware of that also. So, uh, so who, I'm would that, ask who would that permit be? Would that be through the city? Well, and what would the no, it's through the, it's through the state. And Jack has oh, called the game boards to try to find out if this man has a... Yeah, I call him, I, I call him, I talk to him when I go get Right, him, right. And he said that he would check on it and get back with me. Well, I haven't heard from yeah. him yet. And so getting a hold of the game world is know. not an easy task these days. So are we where we can make a motion to amend our animal ordinance and eliminate the animals? Well, either that or we need to enforce the vicious animal and they yeah. need to have muzzles and they need to be in enclosed fences and that needs to be enforced. But our problem is we have an issue. And not only that, he is uh, giving them to half the people in town. You know, they're everywhere, these wolf hybrids. We probably, we probably need to uh, get a hold of the uh, wildlife department. Or is, is it wildlife or, or agriculture, Jack? It'd be wildlife. Yeah, um, and we it was that. Ranker, it was yes. be Because the kennel falls under agriculture, I thought. No, we can't. Um, city, city, city ordinance says no any kennel any more than have three dogs right. specifies it being a kennel. That's why you can only have the three mm -hmm. dogs. Unless they have so, puppies and you can have them up to three months more of age. Three so more. we need to enforce the kennel. We need to do uh, the vicious animal policy has got to be right. If we so we need to try to enforce that. <coughs> yeah, but I do have an issue with the wolves. Yeah, you want to do something. And if we want time to think about it, that's fine. I'm cutting it down to one dog, since you could do that without having a state permit, it would be very logical for us to do that. But He's coming to court this month on that. He I mean, we're, every time he moves, so, every time he moves, we're sticking it to him. I mean, he's got him, he's got it pending right now. I mean, mm -hmm. here I don't is, think uh, nobody realizes what we're dealing with with this guy. And he it's just time after time care. after time. No. He'll tell you, I don't care. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it surprised is, me the tickets hadn't been mailed back yet. 
already. He don't care. Is this the guy that doesn't recognize his yes. yes. government? Yeah. I mean, I started yeah. telling right. him right. 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 Well, a wolf is a pack animal. Mm -hmm. Anything over one creates a pack, and they're very, they can be very vicious. And a city in which I lived in, and I wound up buying the guy's house, they evicted him from the city and his wolves. And I don't, I don't think it's a minor issue. I think it's a major issue. I agree. It's a big because issue. Because every day you go down, and I mean, I like the guy. He, I mean, I talk to him, but he goes down and sells them every weekend. You're not going to have one person. You're going to have many people soon. Right, and that's what I'm saying. He's already so populated the town. Stand up on this issue. I just needed the. I mean, I was there the other day. So you want to? Yeah, she. Uh, have no more than that. I mean, I, 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 I could stand in these people in yard and count twelve. Do we want to make them happy? Are we okay, okay to do to amend our ordinance tonight with a motion saying that you can open? No, we're making it. We're making it. There's another ordinance now. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to draft it. Yeah. Good. You're saying you want to. You want to interact in the ordinance, and whatever you want to say in that, that's what we'll go on. But we do. I'm not for having them at all in the city. Well, that's, that's a fine line there, too, I think, well, in Oklahoma. Well, you get so just say. remember that if we go to court, the state supersedes mm -hmm. our ordinances. Benefit. So they're allowed, Oklahoma allows you to own a wolf, a pure wolf or hybrid, mm -hmm. according to... But how are we going to... I understand what you're I saying. Don't know. I just am afraid that some child or somebody well, is going to get hurt. And that's a, it can happen with Actually, any dog. It can. Happen it really can. Yes. And I mean, that's why our vicious animal policy is. But not how can we enforce that? You're, everybody. You're enforcing it. That's, that's, that's the problem. You, you're, you're enforcing yeah, it. Yeah. You, you've got somebody that is that is not obeying the law right. on a consistent basis. But what basis. do you do about that? that, that we need outside help. You, you, you keep writing the tickets, you keep finding him, and when he when he refuses to do certain things, then you go to the next level. What and is that? And if he refuses to pay the fines and refuses to uh, appear at the court, court, then a warrant gets issued for his arrest, and we take him over to Lafour County, and he has to... Well, that happened, but he never left here because he was bonded out before he left town. Well, so we're to that one already. Well, and you keep doing that, and eventually, eventually you get we're sick and tired of writing the uh, checks to the city of Talladena, or town of Talladena for, for this, and he'll, he'll move on. Right. I mean, yes. I have one other thing to say. When they, the last person that these bulls bought was the county sheriff, and they like to eat him up. It will get to a point. It will escalate. Yes, you're right. You had something? Uh, as far as state and city uh, ordinance are concerned, I think the city uh, is not allowed to underwrite the state law, but it is. It can make it stronger. Well, yeah, exactly. So and that's what several... Uh, like in the state and yeah, state we can do whatever. But no, the state is going to say... Anyway, I make a motion to... Um, have an ordinance that allows one wolf or wolf hybrid per household. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. John, this In, is our argument for this session. Yeah. Okay. Vote. Donnie. Yes. Donna. No. Rhonda. Yes. Dana. Yes. Jackie. Yes. So we'll adopt the ordinance and then put it in the okay. paper and then. Well, we have to no, we have to see the ordinance first and then yeah, adopt it. And then the next month. Discussion yeah. action concerning employee leave request requirements and clarify who approved supervisors. Um, this just kind of came up within my department that we were looking at how much time someone had and how much time they had taken. And Philip fills out an employee leave request. And the question was who approves supervisors leave? I thought it was the crucial. I Odell's considered a supervisor. I know she doesn't have anybody supervised, but she's in that category and whoever's in the treasurer and I approve those. Okay. 
Yeah. Now what's happening and is... And in the police department, Jack always approves mine. And you approve Jack's? The way we are. And I always approve Jack's. I mean, it's one of them deals if we got time and we can take off. We, we, we take off. So, so I, mean, I approve his, he approves mine. We both, whoever... Me or he'll be the one who proves everybody so else. You and you make sure. Yeah, we hold each other accountable. And you make sure that that uh, spot I mean, is covered. I mean, it's one of those right. deals. If, if you if you ain't got the time, or if you can't take off, you just can't take That's off. That's exactly right. So what's been happening is Philip, I guess, asked, and so he's been notifying mm -hmm. Keith. And Keith knows when Philip is gone because you know he needs to cover when Philip is gone. So, but I just wonder, is that how we want to do it? The other thing was that Philip has this really nice lead form. That he fills out what we kind of leave and how many. Okay, when we I was looking through all the payroll, he was Philip was the only one that had them yeah. under those timesheets, so I didn't know oh, if everybody well, we, does or not. We all Mine are in a file. Okay. Okay. We all they we all have the same uh, employee time. leave request form. Okay, okay. everybody on my computer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Police department, do you do you want that to be done differently, or are you just ask one questions? I just want to ask what that was the way it was done. I'm really not sure who would be any better for it. Then, um, unless it was uh, not, I just come by and look at her calendar. Yeah, yeah. Just clarify. I just want to clarify. Do you want to change anything, or are you good with it for now? Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Item number eleven: Discussion action on mobile home permit for Anna Alexander. Is Anna Alexander here? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anna, can you just tell us a little bit about? Um, 1201 11th Street. Yeah, it's either uh, it's on the corner of Isherwood and 11th. And it's uh, my brother's line that he's dead, and I have a piece of paper here that's uh, it says that I can take care of it on the phone of it. There's no mobile home there now. It's no, just there's, two houses, two houses. there's two houses. But I'm going to push one house down because I've had a problem with bed bugs, and I can't get rid of them. I'm pushing one of them down. I'm sorry, who was your brother maybe to help us understand where the Ken property is? Ken Jewell. I still don't know what that is. He has about five years. You can see. But I take care of it. Right, right. And take he had a property, property outside of town also. Then. Yeah. Okay, I know who you're talking about. And I'm fixing to sell my line out in Albany and move the trailer over here at the Delhaina. And you read the ordinance and, and you're mm -hmm. willing to be in compliance with that, mm -hmm. such as which way it faces and underpinning and and your lots are the are bigger than the specified sizes. Uh, my are. lot is 94 by 50. You'd have to remove the house first, though. Okay. 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 I'd have to remove the house before I put a trailer. I, I think so because it would be crowding it. I think I'd have to. I'd have to let you. Look. Well, I'd have to see what it looks like. Behind that. Yeah. Behind your brother's house, the one that he was yeah. living in. Yeah. But you were going to tear one of them down, right? Yeah, I'm going to tear the small one down. But, but you have to have some place to live while you're. Well, I have to have Oh, you're leaving. leaving. Okay. She's leaving one house up. Okay. She's got to put the scratch behind it. Okay. 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 So, so is the lots a uh, the smaller house that's right. 50 by 94, all of them together, or just the one no, you're going to no, put No, no, that's the... just the one that I'm going to move on to. Okay. That's some of the property we have not done before, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, sir. Is, is this a piece of property that a, a mobile home is not allowed on at this time? Well, they're not allowed in the city limits at all without a permit, and she's trying to obtain a permit. And it can be placed on a piece of property that's a certain size, as long as she complies with the ordinance if she gets the permit of it. There's not a piece of property in town that doesn't allow one unless it's not big enough. A big enough piece of property. That doesn't allow. You're saying they are allowed as long as they are allowed as long as it's so they it's get a permit and follow all the everything on the ordinance. The reason I'm it's saying that um, is because mobile homes have a tendency to depreciate right, the property, right. and I don't want. I live in that area. Um, I, I think the mobile home permits 
correct me if I'm wrong, I think those permits can be just for a certain period of time and then we miss it. Am I right? Yes. It says 201 11th Street. It says 1201. It's 201. It says 1201. It's 201. Yes, it is. So is this the property manual we're talking about? Is that the same property? No. I don't think so. That's right on the corner of the White House, the chain link fence. We've sent numerous letters trying to get the yard cleaned up. Is that the same one? Uh, you would have sent them to me. No, she wouldn't pay 35 no, no, again. No, no. I don't think we'll make you charge you 35, no, no. but we do have to have the mobile home. Well, see, I was trying we to can't give you the okay with an assumption. I was trying to go. There. I have one picked out, and I was trying to get pictures of it, but I was going to try to get it by last Friday, and I didn't do it. So I thought, well, I'll take a picture of this one because I may move this one. I don't know. It's a little bit big. And well, I mean, here, what size? size you, we can uh, put it back on the agenda, or we can. You'll be allowed so much time once we okay it to, to do the things okay. that are required on the yes. ordinance. Yes, okay. And as long as you do the things that are required on the ordinance, once it's okay, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay. And the council, is it something that you... I'd, I'd like to actually see the lot right. and, 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 and see if the house needs to be tore down first before you put the trailer in. Oh, the, the house is in front of the, the... Here's the lot right back here. Mm -hmm. And the house is way up here and then there's another house here. But the, the it lot can't actually go there. on that lot if it's not big enough for that house on there until it's, you know, mm -hmm. if she has a house on there, it needs to be tall. Oh, it's, down. It's, it's way down. It's way up ahead. Oh, uh, so it's you way still got enough room. Oh, yeah. She, the, the lot behind the houses is what, 90? It's 90. Uh, 50 by 94. Yeah, 50 by 94. How soon are you wanting to? I haven't even sold my place yet. Uh, I haven't even got all the way packed yet. It'll probably be another month or two. So if you okay. get us something on the mobile home you want to place on that. Well, I may move this one. I don't know. Well, when well, you we decide for sure, can I tell you? Just uh -huh. let us know. It'll still, I guess, according to when you let us know when that permit gets okay. But I think the council will entertain that permit, okaying that permit if everything's good. Okay, so I'll, have, I'll come back to one of these meetings. Well, you just need to get it, whatever you need on the mobile home and get it to Lavelle. Yes. When, when you decide what you're going to do, mm -hmm. for sure, mm -hmm. you just can tell me and then I'll get with one and of the commissioners to get you back on the agenda. Yeah. Okay, and I can go and do all this again? Well, actually, we'll make it easy. unless we have questions or something for okay. you, you have okay. came okay. to the meeting. Well, Donnie can go out there and look at it. It's huge. It's, it's yeah. pretty big enough. Very big. Okay. You just deal with Linnell and we'll get the information. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Anna. Anna. Okay. No, I have no action on item 11. Item number 12, discussion action on easement for Mr. C. McLean and Mrs. D. Williams. Tom, shall I see you? Finish this up. The uh, surveys, I don't know if you guys have copies of these or not. Yes, they okay. do. Um, the surveys were done, and I just talked with Mr. McLean. The easement number two, 
is the easement that would go to his property, the ingress and egress easement for him. And easement number one is the one that would go to Miss Williams' property. And uh, the uh, legal description is out there on the copy I got. It's very, very small. Uh, I've got a bigger copy if you guys have a small copy. Uh, I just realized got I it too. more of a long one. It's still hard to read. But that, that's essentially what it is. And what we would be doing is we would be giving Mr. McLean an easement for traveling on that road uh, from the point it starts to his property. And we'd be giving Miss Williams an easement uh, traveling on the road that starts there and goes to her property. There's a little overlap. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just you don't, don't need to give me an easement. I've got it. I know, but I think I think in order to to make it clearer and more consistent, I think we would need to uh, adopt an easement that is is specific with I've what. I've got an easement, and I've got a survey of that easement, so I, I you don't need to give me. Okay, one. And, and if you don't want one, that's fine. And if the council doesn't want to give you one, if the council decides they want to give you one, it's, I, it's not my decision; it's theirs. Okay. Uh, that, but I'm just saying, I've got Mr. Uh, Hackler, who represents uh, Miss Williams' interest did send over an easement for ingress and ingress, and I have compared it with the survey that we have, and it is consistent, and this would give her the access to her property, and all we would need to do is vote. Okay. Uh, uh, is it flagged right now? Flagged? <coughs> yeah, I mean, it's a surplus flag, but we can go out and physically look at it. the survey, so I don't know if it is. I have no idea. They did the survey, I think, last Well, how are we going to prove something we don't know where this is? It's got a legal description. Yeah, I, I know exactly. that, but where is that on the property? It's the, the legal description. Okay, am I, am I, I'm not a surveyor, Sean, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at this here. survey and go out there to this piece of property and say, oh, this road's going to run here. We, have, we haven't redone because the first my, my point road. is, is it flagged to show us where this survey is? I, I don't know. I it's been. a road. Cal, is there it's, any there lines no, up there showing where the survey has been? There's a flag leading, exiting my roadway. A new one? Where that road is at. Okay, a new one? New flag? Is it something new that has just been yes, placed there? Okay. Does, does, does it travel? It's been placed since the survey. And, and, okay. it, and it runs into the floodplain of the city, of the lake. What yeah. my, my point is, is it goes right where we don't want a public road. Uh, well, we're not granting a public road. Well, if she has access to it, anybody going up to that, her house can go up there and she can invite anybody she wants to to go cross city property. Uh, we have problems down there right now with trash and everything else. Uh, but we need to see exactly where this road is before I'm willing to say, yeah, she can take that road. Uh, well, I she's not taking the road. She's, she's, she's going to build a new road. Isn't this what you have been doing? I think Sean just did what we asked him to do. What I'm saying is, yes. who told the surveyor where to mark the access, the easement? Well, I guess they were. I did. Okay, and, and you told them to take the road that's there right now? I told them to survey the road that is there now for an easement. It's a pig trail. I wouldn't say it was a road. Would you, Cal? I'm talking. For well, an I'm, I'm easement for Mr. McLean and an easement for Mr. Mm -hmm. and, and And so did you tell the surveyor to flag it so we could see exactly I'll where it is? Flag. Hmm? Yes, it's flagged. Okay. So his I'll, name is Jeff. So, okay, well, so, I got, I got just a second. Sean, do you think there's a question with the survey? I mean, did you have anything to do with where they surveyed or anything? No. Else? All you did was took the opinion and went with that. Jeff, Jeff called my office okay. a week or so ago, asked me some questions about what the situation was. I explained to him the entire history of okay. what I knew from my yeah. perspective, and then a day or two later, Liddell uh, okay. faxed over the survey. Okay. Donnie, you want to go check those surveys? I think before we vote on it, we need to see exactly where it is. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. But I question you, uh, the city's ability to give an easement over my easement. You understand what I'm saying? This is where we, me and the original builder had a difference of opinion. All I wanted him to do was agree to meet maintenance requirements on the roadway and the bridge. And he would not do it. I remember that, yes. So, I uh, my concern is, is somebody's going to maintain they're going to use that road, they need to maintain, they're going to maintain it. it. Yes, sir. And that's why I agree to have the county take it over because if the county takes it and over, the county somebody's going to do it. And the county, we gave it to the county, and the county returned exactly. it. 
Because well, Pam doesn't want to maintain it either. Well, nobody wants to maintain it. That's what, what was it called? I don't want to maintain let, it. Let, let me talk to Angela. I know Angela. Well, uh, do we? Who's Angela? She's the Angela owner. Angela owns that other property. She's our owner on it. Well, I just think we need to get back to the survey and see what the survey is in the proper But, the but if I, I know Angela real well, and she told me before she's not interested in suing, so I don't know if it's her other partner that's interested in suing. Well, I think, you know, I think right, we but it's not from Angela. We asked Sean to get a new survey. It says it's representing her. Representing her interest, right. but she didn't, I don't know if she approved it or not. Are we going to move away from the original thing that we had Sean do to see about getting a new survey on the property? Well, to see about this is the new survey. What I'm right. saying is, until, where, if we don't know where it's at, how can we approve it? The survey before was going into the lake, so it had to be corrected. Yeah. And so Donnie would like to go and see if it has yes. been corrected before we okay it. I'm good with letting him go out there and see it, but it looks, Sean, it looks to me like Sean yeah. done what we've asked him to do. He did do what we asked him to do. Right, you did what you asked it, we asked you to do, but, but until Donnie we know where it's at. Right. I, I, I understand where you're coming from, I understand your concern. Right. Um, it's just... Candidly, this has been this has been it's an been issue for mm -hmm. almost a year now, and it, either either a we need we need to decide we're gonna we're gonna give her the easement and let her use the road, and if you feel like you need to go look at it, that's fine. Or b I need to communicate to her attorney that we're not gonna give her the easement. Well, I'm not saying we're not going to, but we need to verify it first. Uh, and, and that's fine. It's just he, he wrote a letter about a month or so ago, and he's, he's wanting some action on it because it's. It's taking so long, right? And so I, I, I communicated to him. So I talked, called him right before I came over here tonight. And I said it's on tonight's agenda. They're going to discuss it, and it's mainly I was just keeping him up to, up to date on what was going on. Well, no offense to you, but if we'd have had known it had been surveyed and there were the flags where we could have inspected it well, we before this week. Well, we're just, we're just, yeah. Yeah. It was on. It, we we Are we going to have no action, or is there a motion? I prefer no action until we verify it. And I'd make a motion to. I don't see any reason to keep on keeping this going. Um, unless you unless you give them access to the attorney that has told me that you cannot give my easement to someone else because of the improvements I made until they to like it. Now is that easement for a long time? If you do, you're gonna avert that lawsuit that you're gonna be facing another lawsuit. Give, give, give us a chance until next month to try to figure this out. It's an easement for a lifetime. We have no action on item number 12. Item number 12. And we for sure need to. We for sure need to. Oh my goodness. Um, Don, can hmm? we make sure that we get that back on? Yes, next yes, month so that yes. We and get, get it taken care of once okay. and for all. Gotcha. Discussion item number 13, discussion action on annex at Easy Park North on town store number 518. When I was discussing with Mary our shortcomings of the city, and I have been pro annexing for years now, but we never seem to have gone any far with it. We found out just a few months ago that we were providing sewer to this Easy Mark. That's one of the requirements before we can annex is that we have to provide sewer and we have to provide police police water protection. Yes. The water, if it's in our water district or if it's another water district, we're fine in fire. So to me, it looks like it would be kind of clean and cut to be able to go out there, use the right of way to annex the property and to pick up Easy Mart. And I'm anticipating by based on how much the other Easy Mart is doing in sales taxes, it's probably going to get us four or five, maybe six thousand dollars a month. So at this point, I asked Sean to research it and see how much he thought his legal fees and what our costs would be to acquire Easy Mart to annex Easy Mart. Are you just talking about one Easy Mart? The other Easy Mart's already in the sea limits. Oh, okay. Now, this, this one appears in the sea limits. This one is in sea limits. This and that's the one you're talking about. This is the one how about about Holland's Lumber and all up in there, Valero and all that? No, I'm not talking about that right now. Is that so something Rhonda, that would be considered? Possibly in the future, but that's more expensive. So, Rhonda, what would you like to do at this point? Would you like the council's permission for you to pursue some? I'd like to hear what Sean found out for me. Oh, so you already asked Sean? I've already asked Sean. And he's already sending us a bill on that. <laughs> okay. Well, Sean, can we have a report on that? Yeah. Um, Please. I, a lot of the work is going to be are you wanting Liddell to do it or are you wanting me to do it? 
because that, that's, that's going to come into play because what's going to have to happen is we're going to have to pass an ordinance saying that we want to, um, uh, to annex part of the property. I can draft that or Liddell can draft it. But basically what we're going to have to do is wherever the city limit line ends, we've got to go from there all the way to where you want to go. We can't just say, okay, we're going to take the easy mark in, in the area around it. We've got to go from the city limits line all the way out there. Okay? <clears throat> then we've got to obtain written consent from the owners in a majority of the acres that we're, we're annexing. And I have no idea how many owners we're talking about. And again, this is, do you want to send Sean over to LaFleur County and Latimer County? Because I think where that easy mark is, is in Latimer County. But I think where you're going to have to go is to go from here is, is going to include LaFleur County. So, got to go over there and figure out who owns what property where in LaFleur County. Got to then do it in Latimer County at that point. Might be able to do it over the phone. I'm not 100% sure on that or not, but we got to get records so that we can send them, uh, send it to them. Then we've got to provide the notes. And again, you want me to draft it or you want Liddell to draft it? Uh, we've got to have uh, it posted in the newspaper and then we have to mail it, certified mail, to all the owners. Then we've got to conduct a hearing. At that point, you probably want me involved in, in the process. We have to have a majority of those people at the public hearing that are in favor of doing it. If they're not, then we're probably going to have to file suit uh, in order to, to move forward to get it. If everybody's okay with being annexed into town, it won't cost that much. But the moment we have to file suit, it's going to cost you $300 just to file a lawsuit to begin with, and then $100 an hour uh, going over to um, two different counties because it's LaFleur County for part of it and Latimer County for the other part of it. And if we, and here's what I always call a hammer, and there's a bunch of other stuff involved, but basically if the lawsuit gets involved on this, the prevailing property owners in the NNX dispute are entitled to court costs and reasonable attorney fees. So if you have some property owners that want to fight you on this and you end up losing, you're paying me and you're paying the other attorney and you're paying court costs. So, at a minimum, I think you need to first figure out who all the property owners are out there and, and get a barometer on where they're at with the process. Because if, if they're all in favor of it, okay, we'll move, we move forward, we'll have the hearing, we'll send out all the notices, we'll do all the, uh, do all the plans that we need to do. Uh, and there's actually a requirement that the plans be done. Okay, just, just because we're providing the sewer and, and the water, uh, we still have to have a plan in place that has to be approved by the board, has to be approved by the the, the property owners saying we're okay with, with the plan. It's still, we still, even though it's there, we still have to do the uh, do the stuff. Anyway, long story short, um, estimating ballpark, I would say anywhere between five thousand dollars if it's easy, and probably thirty thousand dollars in tar. Mary, you have. I'm sorry, Mary, you've had some annexing. Yes, I just experience. wanted to speak uh, from my viewpoint and just sort of go along with what Sean's saying because I do have quite a bit of experience with annexations, and I love the idea that he has almost of taken a straw poll. Obviously, you have to identify the property owners and find out where they stand before it makes sense to decide if you want to commit yourself to that kind of money. But in my experience. The success or failure rate hinges on the local property owners seeing a local face coming hat in hand showing these are the benefits and here's what it's going to cost you and here's what it'll do for our town. Um, nothing against Sean or anybody like that, but in my experience when I've sent an out-of-town professional to either make a call or to show up, uh, local property owners, especially in our type of culture, they don't take well to that. They want to see one of their own come to them and make a case for it. I, I would agree with that. You, see, you send me to, the, to somebody's door and it's already antagonistic because I'm a lawyer. Right. Yeah. But I think the council needs to be in support of whoever's going to go do that. I don't think it just needs to be, because I know that's happened before, that just randomly council members have talked to business owners and it like freaked them out. And, right. No, I, know, I, and I think that I wouldn't ask anybody to do it without the council's blessing. If, if, Robert, did you have something? Yeah. Can, can you just, can you annex just the road? And then out, then once you get out there, annex just the easy mark. I don't think so. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Well, I, the reason I said this is, I mean, I went, at one time we were talking about trying to annex south, right. and we had somebody that didn't want to get involved. Right. 
Um, and we did some checking on that, and we were told that you could annex just the road. Who told you that? Well, I don't want to get into that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but you know, you can, and it, and it kind of goes through to the state, right? To take in that strip of the highway, right? To the business you want. That can also be done in certain cases with utility easements yeah. that you could patchwork yourself to it by way of easements, but it depends on very specific laws. Yeah. I mean, the mechanics of going about and doing it, I mean, if the town adopts an ordinance and says they want to just go down the state highway and then get that in there, I got it, I almost guarantee you that the, the easy mark owner is probably going to be like, not only no, but heck no, I'm not going to let you, you do this, and he's probably going to fight you on it. Yeah. Uh, and and that, looks, that looks, from my perspective, if I'm the judge looking at that, and you're annexing, just the road, and then all of a sudden, when you get to these yeah. part, you go out and grab him, and that's like something that's going to be your property. I'm just going to have that stretch of road yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, probably, I'm probably not going to side with, with you on that. Yeah. Uh, now, I mean, if you go down the road and, and, and get, you know, go one lot <laughs> over this way and one lot over that way, where, where it looks like it's not just you just run out there to get that property mm -hmm. within the town, maybe that works a little bit better. The mechanics of, of how to do it, there's there's no case law that says you got to do this, you got to do that. I mean, there's well, we're in a good position. We got water and sewer coming from we're that way. Well, one other thing I'm thinking of is if we annex and extend our city limits out there, the ordinance says you cannot collect a penny of sales tax until you provide them with all the other right. amenities the city has. So I know what this preliminary talking with Keith is to get Fitzgerald fee to where we can collect sales tax on them. We have to bore under the highway, which is twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So it could be that we're annexing all these, but we're not going to impose the sales tax on Fitzgeralds immediately, or it could be that well, we it, just be it given was, uh, law enforcement coverage. Law enforcement law coverage, right. And tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I uh, was under the impression that they used to give you about a year to get all that yeah, stuff to really, really but fun. now you have to, don't you have to get it to them right away? If, if, you, if you make the decision to do it and you send out the, the, the notices, there is a requirement that the public hearing be done no earlier than 14 days, no more than 30 days following the publication and the mailing of the notice. So once, once you make the decision you're going to do it, it has to happen quickly. You can't drag your feet can't put it off. Once, once you say we're going to do it and you, and, you, and you put it in the paper and say we're annexing this part and you send out the notice to the property owners, at that point you're, 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 you're committed and you need to have the hearing within obviously within 30 days. But if we can get three-fourths of these property owners to say yes I want to be in there, it's a much easier. Oh, much, much easier. But if yes. we vote on this tonight, what you're saying is within 30 days. No, 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 no. no okay. No, no, no. What, 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 I, what, I, what I'm proposing that you do, what, for, what I was asked to do, was I was asked to look at, at the annexation statutes again, determine what the mechanics were, and what I thought, reasonably speaking, it was going to cost from the legal side. Because you don't want to incur a ton of legal fees that you're, you're not going to be able to recoup in, in sales tax for several, several months or several years. So I was asked, look, look at this and, and see how much I think it's going to cost. And again, a lot of this comes down to, if you're asking me to do the task, remember, i got to build a rate. If you're asking Liddell or asking uh, Mary to do it, then you know, you've got, it, that, that's, that's an easier cost to deal with. And some of the tasks are things that they probably have more time to do, and it's easier for them to, them to do. Uh, you know, when, when you suggest right now we just do some more preliminaries before we go I, any further? What, what I think I would do is I'd I find, find out who the property owners mm -hmm. are in the area you want to annex. And i designate one person on the council, maybe two people on the council. Just go talk to them and say, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Would you be opposed to it? And if they say, eh, you yeah, know, I would be. Well, you know, if you get enough of them that are opposed to it, it's probably not going to be worth the effort. It's going to cost them much more. And you could just do one side of the road, correct? You could. Well, you have to do the utility that's serving them, do you not? Yeah, you have to have... In other words, if the sewer's all they're using right now, you'd have to annex the sewer all the way out, would you not? We have to... I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. Okay. The reason we're saying we should be able to annex them is because they're being served with the sewer system right now, city sewer. No, what, what she's saying, what, what, what Rhonda was saying is, is that there's, there's basically easiest way to look at it. There's four requirements that you have to have in mm -hmm. the plan. 
You have to be able to provide them with sewer, you have to be able to provide them with water, you have to be able to provide them with fire protection, you have to be able to provide them with police protection. You put that in your plan and you say, this is what we're going to do. What Ron is saying is, is that the sewer issue is already settled because the sewer line's already running okay. out there. Right. So we don't have to worry about how are we going to run it, and, and that cost has already been defrayed. That's we don't have to worry cost. about it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's already there. So, so we go as far out as we want to a certain with the well, plus we also get into the situation where we have to fight with the water district is serving them water now. No, no, no. If they are in another water district, we do not have to take that water district away. And All that's we have also to say is we have a right in things and they are in the Buffalo Valley Water District. Yeah. We are so not we don't have to serve them water. No. You don't have to. As long as you address that in the plan, as long as they know that that's okay. part of the plan and the annexation process, as long as they're aware of that they're okay with it, then that's fine. So then my understanding is you're already serving all those. You don't need a permission. No, you still have to get the yeah, permission. Yeah, we have to get officially annexed it. Well, why don't we do some research at some other time? And why don't we decide who on the council is going to talk to the property owners or make a motion or something so we can move on with that? It is definitely something that, if you know, we need to be in support of that if some council members go out. Do we have support of all the council members to pursue that? Yes, yes. I'm Francis. Yes. I have one thing to ask. Do our police argue out there? Mm -hmm. Only in the emergency. And they can only maintain it until the county gets there. Right. And why Rodney is actually, is supporting this is because that will allow them longer amount of street that they can patrol for more speeding tickets. Oh, I'm supporting um, I, 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 I was just going to ask a question yeah. about that okay. very thing. Like, I, I noticed that the highway patrol has been in town issuing speeding tickets. Isn't that a missed opportunity for us to generate revenue from those tickets, or is there a different uh, issue? Well, I to go anywhere to say Oklahoma. Well, I understand that, but why are we not doing well, we do. We are. They are doing it. Well, we the when they state. want to come no, into town, that's a whole new discussion. Let's we'll yeah. have that at a different time. Okay. okay so, so we have a motion, motion from motion. Gina to pursue the annexation. And you want to put it in line? Sure. Okay. We have a motion to pursue it, and Gina and Rhonda will be the spokesperson. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any more discussion? And Liddell and Mary will kind of help out with that information for now. I'm we will assuming. budget Sean's costs okay. all that we can. Any more discussion? <laughs> well, we're not. We're not. Well, hang a minute now. Any more discussion? <laughs> that, yes. That's not in the we're, we're not even starting that process no. yet. No. We're, we're just gathering we're information right now. Any more discussion? We understand that. <laughs> Donnie. Yes. Donna. Yes. Rhonda. Yes. Gina. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Okay, item number 14, approve rejects the spending city council monthly pay until, is that Father Angela? Father Father notice. Father notice. <laughs> until your father says. It's Ruby. I was like, Father. I, I know. Like I, I know. It's, it's, it's 20 bucks. It's a hundred dollars a month. But the way I look at this is we are so in the red. And we may, may get to the point where we have to ask some of our employees to take cuts or some of our departments to take cuts. May. I just think it ought to start with us. That we ought to say we're going to be the first ones to take the first cut. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not, I like my tweet back. Well, just, just for the record, I don't get any money anyway. I don't either. <laughs> Most of the time, I don't make the money to somebody. Well, I get money. So. I used to. And I'm in here long time. I keep money. Mm -hmm. I figured that out. So I just think it's a nice way to tell our employees that, hey, we're willing to take cuts too. Well, I'll, I'll make a motion that we suspend and pay to the council. And I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Vote. Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? I No. <laughs> Jackie, no. can I take you? Not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little crop of crap. I'll buy it out. I'll buy it out. That means if it's not a majority, I don't take it all. Okay? I am number 15. Approved for executive session under Title 21. Section 307 D1 discussing employment, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, or resignation. How many salary public officer? Employee animal control, clerk treasurer salary, hiring lifeguards, manager assistant, manager for swimming pool. <coughs> Contract, clerk Perry Timmons, violation of Oklahoma Open Meeting Act, salary structure of employees. All of that on one? Yeah. 
That's not the move. Okay. We need a motion. Motion to approve. Do <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion? Second. And a second. Any more discussion? Vote. Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Dana? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Jaina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Item number 17, action of any from executive session. On animal control, I make the motion to hire Joshua Alexander at $500 a month for a part-time position. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Okay. Donnie? No. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Any motion on the motion? Um, I make a motion to set the clerk treasurer's hours to be 25 hours a week at $8 an hour plus the $250 pay no. for treasurer's. No, is that not right? No. Okay, I'm sorry. It's included. Thousand fifty. It was coffee. Right. You're right. A thousand fifty. Yes. For a total of for a total of a thousand fifty. For six months. For six months. And then you re for a training period, and we reevaluate to see if that position will be back on hours. Second. And a second. Any more discussion? Donnie. Yes. Donna. Yes. Rhonda. Yes. Gina. Yes. Jackie? Yes. Oh, I make a motion that we hire um, just the manager. Okay, uh, Shannon Coleman for manager, Sherry Ward assistant manager for the pool at, um, at 11 an hour. Okay. Second. Second. Any more discussion? Donnie? No. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Um, lifeguards, Keisha Brown, Ty Trowbridge, Brooke Freeman, Taggart Lockhart, Alan Lockhart, Caleb Stowe, S T O W E L L, Brian Humphreys. And that we will not reimburse their yes. training. Well, no. A second question. <coughs> Any more discussion? Donnie? No. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Now uh, you have swimming pool so you need to do pool parties. $60. Uh, Make a motion that we raise the swimming pool private parties to sixty dollars for two hour period. We have a motion. Second. Second. Any more discussion? Vote. Donnie? No. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. I make a motion that we raise the admission fee to the pool to three dollars. We have a motion. Second. Second. Any more discussion? Vote. Donnie? No. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. What about contract clerk attendance? <coughs> this is yours. Hmm? This is yours. Uh, I've got that on there, so I'll make a motion that, uh, uh, well, uh, that, that Mary Timmons uh, 
uh, is does what she was contracted to do and nothing else as far as her job description. Who's going to get that contract? We should already had it. So you're going to you're going to okay a contract? Okay. So you're going to get a contract together for the board to look at? What we need to do. Make a okay, we have a motion. We don't have a contract. We're going to get it. I make the motion to get to do a contract. Okay. Then. To do a contract. Yeah, to do a contract, defining her duties as strictly okay. at, uh, to accounting duties. We have a motion to do a contract. To find Donnie is going to fix up a contract that the council will approve, and she will only do the duties on the contract. We have a motion. I'll second it. This second. Any more discussion? Vote. Donnie? It, yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? No. Jackie? Yes. Violation of Oklahoma Open Meeting Act, Donnie. Uh, we're going to table that and discuss it in our uh, uh, budget meeting. Thought you had no action on that? Not on the. Can't talk not about on the violation of Oklahoma Open Meeting Act at the. Budget meeting. No, I mean when we set the budget meeting in the future, not not. So tonight. you have no action on this. No agenda. action right now. Okay, no action. Salary structure of employees. No action. No action till the budget. Okay, we have no action on any of those. Okay, item number eighteen. Discussion action on spending, hiring, salary freeze. I've got that on there, and the reason I do is because whether anybody realizes or not, we're going to twenty thousand dollars a month. A month. And so I find it hard to continue to hire people when we can't pay everything we're doing now. And that's why I've got that on there. I know you guys, I think you're worth more than what you're getting. But I'd rather us find a way to stop this bleeding now than to get to a point where we're going to have to say we can't pay anybody. Mary, so, can you come here a minute? Sorry. Go ahead, Don. So that's why I've got this in here to try to stop the bleeding. Because if we don't now, it'll be too late later. And uh, I don't want to do any layoffs. I don't want to do anything like that. But we've got to figure out a way to trim how much we're spending. Our payroll last year was over six hundred and something thousand dollars, plus another eighty thousand dollars in insurance payments on health insurance, plus unemployment, plus FICA. So we're spending more than we're bringing in. And how do we stop that? So, what I'm, I'm going to say is that as long as I'm here, I'm going to do everything in my power to see to it that you're not cut in any way. Because I do not believe that the employees of this community is where we need to cut anything. And that's only my personal opinion. Just like Donnie's is that we have to cut. And we do have to cut. Just like we came out from that swimming pool and we cut everything we possibly can. Which We know that you are the people that work 24-7. We don't. We know you're the people that hold this town together. We don't. We know you work 24-7. We don't. And we appreciate you for that. And I just want you to know that I'm not entertaining that thought. I'm entertaining a lot of thoughts, but I don't have a... I, I mean, I'm not talking about doing anything like that. My question for Mary, if you don't mind, is when you first came here, were we not in a hole a lot more than we are now? Can you tell me, you might not answer this question, and I didn't ask you before, and, and I'm sorry to put you on the spot. And yes, right now we have, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have about 14000 a month that we have more bills at the end of the month than we can pay for. Is that correct? It's about in, fourteen. It's in the, the 15 to 20 range okay. if you count payroll taxes. 15 to 20. When you first came here, can you give me an idea of what we were in the hole when you first came? Oh, mercy. I mean, it was well over a hundred thousand more than we are now and I managed to renegotiate some things with the USCA we've improved collection procedures and just basically cleaned a lot of things up and um, so we're we're in your opinion going from a hundred and twenty thousand in the whole a month to fifty thousand uh, or to twenty thousand I can't say it was a month well, but I'm just saying when when I was first here we were delinquent with literally all of our vendors except for the utilities that were set up on automatic drive the way it is now, we are current with all of our vendors except for with our payroll tax agencies. 
Now, I know that the council mentioned earlier that we're legally bound to pay those, and of course we are. And I don't just not pay those because I don't want to. But the point is, as an accountant, when I have more bills than I have money, who can I hold at bay? Uh, the electric company is not going to wait. Our water treatment chemical company is not going to wait. The people who pick up our garbage aren't going to wait. And so, unfortunately, I've, I've been making those tough decisions because that's what I've been tasked with doing. One of the things that's particularly challenging for us right now is that in addition to playing a massive game of catch-up, in addition to the fact that we still are spending or need to spend more than we make, we also have additional expenditures that we weren't dealing with last year, and those are associated with the water treatment plant project. Everyone's getting the benefit of the improved drinking water. However, we have not done anything as a town or as a utility to basically come up with the revenues to pay for that project. And what's very interesting and telling to me is if you look at the amount that that project costs us per month and will for many, many years, it's right in that fifteen to twenty thousand dollar mark. So you can start to see a connection between the two. So thank you. And and you know, you've been told before, and I'll tell you again, even this time will pass. Even this time will pass. But in my opinion, we are we don't need to have you guys scared to death. We are so much better off than we were a year ago because we know where we're at. We have lots of things to shave and lots of things to cut. Well, that's what I'm asking, where are we gonna shave? Well and and we haven't decided that. And for let y'all know She's done all these cuts and everything, and we're still bleeding 20, 15 to 20,000 a month. Right. There's not that much more to cut. No, there's not, and that's why I would propose, and I've got some, mm -hmm. some ideas I'd like to share with you guys in the appropriate setting <clears throat> about how we can generate revenues, because there's not a lot of fat to trim. And I do have a, a couple of ideas on that that I would love to share with you all, like I said, at the right time. Well, hopefully we're going to have an agenda item down here to establish a meeting to talk about this. Okay, great. And, and try to find out okay, how we can get this budget under control. Yeah, I would love to share because if we don't, sooner or later, we're going to get to that point of no return. That's right. And, and, and I don't want us to get there. PJ, what did you have? Well, I heard her say that uh, we haven't done anything to increase revenue, but, but didn't, they just, didn't they just raise the rates on the utilities? That was to actually bring the rates up in line with the cost. What happens is in many, the vast majority... But you did raise them. They did raise yes. the rates. They raised the rates so that they could even get the money for the project. And the reason why was because the rates had not been raised in so long that they were actually selling the money for less than it cost them to make it. So in order to get that money, they had to raise the rates. You are absolutely correct. They raised the we rates. We did that in order to pay back our loan. That well, we were that, 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 but she we said all, they did. The Oklahoma Water Board came out. They, 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 they want us to do and it And my other year. question is, when we are we going to get a budget? We're yes. going to try to have a budget within 30 days. We have, we have a budget. We just have not okayed that budget. We have a budget now. That, that, no, that nobody's seen. But there, I, I, I have a copy of it. Anyway, Francis, you had a question. Okay. I was wondering if there was a question. Was your name is the one she thought. I know how, how she works. She has to have an objection date when she thinks that gap's going to close. I don't have a date because right now we're not even keeping up with our monthly expenses. Therefore, I cannot close the gap on the past two expenses. We're actually widening, widening the gap every month. We're not closing the gap. Okay. Then, um, I mean, I'm all about progress and getting things done. And I think as a group, we should come up with some ideas to make enough money to maybe pay the taxes. I think with our annexing, if that actually works out for us, it's going to help us a lot. And I think sometimes, if that works out. I mean, a suggestion that I have, I've dealt with old things for a long, many number of years. I'm not saying new things are always better, but I just wonder if we could have a city option and have people maybe the city donate what they don't need, what they might need to replace. We've been talking about doing In that. town. I know I've got some stuff I could seriously All donate. those little things would probably make a difference. Maybe something different. And um, try to come together in unison. And I mean, I don't know of anybody else that would sit here for $20 a month 
and well they just took that well i'm concerned about that too yeah, because me. that leaves the city i think in a legal liability i may be wrong um as the attorney I think you have to change your ordinance in order to take it away but yeah mm -hmm. and i would i would rather pay you twenty dollars a month than make it mandatory i would rather donate it if it kept this mm -hmm. town from sinking mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that thought but, but anyway um uh I mean, if there's issues, and I, I mean, I'm sitting here wondering how many people are banking on the income tax return that's going to be held up till we pay that. Um, till we pay what? Till we pay their taxes in. Oh, uh, there won't be, that, that's, that won't be affected by that. Okay. That will not be affected by that. Okay. And you also need to know that whether it be poor management of the board or poor manage management by people we had in these positions, the board that you had did not just sit here and do this intentionally. Oh, I know that. There's been a lot of lessons learned from it. A lot of trust has gone now because of it. But we're healing. We're getting better. We're getting better and we learn from our mistakes and we move forward. So, do you have anything else, Francis? Lahoma, you had something? Uh, yeah, I was just going to uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, touch on the point of uh, where we have opportunities to generate more revenue. And uh, that, that's why I asked the question about the highway patrol riding tickets where our officers might be missing the opportunity to draw revenue. Right, and I think Jean has talked to her department about that, and I think it has increased. Okay. Quite a bit. And then, uh, you and know, I our, think it I, I'd like for our, our uh, new dog catcher to meet with the Animal Control Advisory Committee, if you're still recognizing this, are you? Then to uh, talk about ways where we can generate some revenue in, in that regard. I okay. think that you and Jeannie could visit about that. I think that would. Be well, Gina hasn't been to our meeting, so I'm hoping that maybe this she, is Gina has a conflict. Yeah. A conflict, but we can see what we can do. I tell you, um, once we get him hired, you come and see Liddell about it, and we'll see if okay. we can. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see if we can't okay. introduce you to him. Okay. Okay, because we, we need somebody that's reliable. To now, when you them. say we recognize you, we do recognize you, but you do know that it's not affiliated with the town of Calhoun or the board, right? When you say well, that we it, recognize you. It is and you, it isn't. I mean, to what degree are you are you asking us just to twiddle our thumbs? And like no, we're, ask, we're asking you as an organization to come to us and bring suggestions that we okay. may do to make and this we're, town we're still formulating those on Yes, we are so. still working together with that, yes. Yeah. And so yes, they're all. But ready. you probably won't have a, you know, you may not have somebody from the board at every meeting, but that doesn't mean we're not interested in hearing what you got. Well, we we have uh, interested people, I think, uh, and it just, you know, sure. wherever your interests are is what you'll do. You yes. know, you don't do the things yes. you're not interested in. But we'll do the, the quicker you guys move with ideals, the better we'll be. Well, so. we we have some very definitive things we're we're working on. So that is great. We have those in writing. Okay. Today. I'd just like to say to all of our employees, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, on item number 18, Donnie, you want to make a motion? Yes, and, and, and let me explain to you what I'm thinking here on this number 18 on the hiring freeze. To me, it doesn't make sense for us to hire somebody new and then tell you we ain't got any money. I'd rather not cut anybody. I think, I hope that you would rather remain where you're at and, and, and not lose anything. So that's why I'm proposing this spending hiring salary freeze until we can get this under control. I didn't know we were going yeah. out for applications on any Well, that, I'm saying we shouldn't until it's we get our budget control. under control. That's, that's what my motion okay. is, okay. is that we freeze any hiring, spending, salary freeze until we figure this budget out. Donnie, how do we freeze spending? We have well, when I say freezing, um, we don't, I'm, I'm sorry guys, but we, we would cut out your yearly what is it called? The um, longevity pay. I think when you get your money, and, and, you can uh, talk about that. Uh, well, if that's in general, it's, it's all right, is it not? Mm -hmm. If I don't specifically say an employee. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just suggesting that you do that during your budget meeting. Well, we, we have to figure this so out. Your so your motion is you want to make a motion that you. That we don't hire anybody. That you don't spend any money and, and we freeze salaries at what they are salary. until we, we have figure this out. motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. I for lack of motion. We might regroup on how you got it all there. Item number 19, discussion action on asking state auditors for assistance. I had contacted the auditor's office to ask if they could come down and give us some assistance. And they were willing to do that at no charge. 
to the city of Tallahanna. It's not an audit. It's not trying to get anybody in trouble. It's them coming down and showing us procedures and ways we need to be doing things to make sure we comply with the laws. And I so, think we've already paid an auditor to do that. I think you just need to call that auditor and ask him to do his job. Well, because he's already been paid for another year's audit. Here, here we go again. I'll let you kill it for lack of a second. But I think it's good that we bring them in in case we do get audited. They know we're working with them. We have a motion on the floor to call in the state auditor for assistance. How would, how would this not be helpful, do you think? If it's, it's not going to cost us anything, why wouldn't we want that? If somebody's it scared. sounds like we got into some really bad problems. Now, we, we've we've been guidance. audited by the state before. And this is not an audit. He's not talking about No, but we, we've dealt with the state auditors before. And I don't think there's not anything that's We have a list of things to go by. We, we actually have, have an auditor. It. Yeah. It's going to be taking up Mary's time to do this. You're already wanting to cut back. We have a motion. motion. We need a second pretty quick. What Good did you say, Sean? We need a second. You, gotta be, you need a second to continue oh. discussion. Fail due to lack of a second. Y'all, you might regroup on that too. Talk to the board more about it. Item number 21 discussion action on meeting to establish budget and bill for 2014. Sure. What date you want that on? Whatever y'all can all meet on. What day are you going to have that budget ready to talk about? Mary, are we ready? I don't, I don't think Mary's been working on that budget. We had a meeting scheduled to do the budget and it was canceled. Mm -hmm. How much work did you have done on that? How much more time do you need? I had zero work done on that. I put out fires every day. So but you do have people that worked on their budgets that you do have. Oh yeah, Jack did his part, absolutely. And, and then I still ones? have um, the notes that, or what Trudy had worked up, because I crunched a lot of numbers when she was here to give her some historical data to use. So absolutely, we're not starting from scratch. Um, you guys just tell me when and I'll have it ready, but please keep in mind that I have an absolutely huge non-negotiable deadline this month with state unemployment. What date is that? It's at the month end. Today is the 10th, so we don't have a whole lot of time before our next... Well, if you want me to continue signing checks, you need to get your budget approved. Are you going to be signing your checks yourself? Can we do it on the phone? We can. We can. We can start. We can start. We can start it. We don't have to complete it in this next meeting. No, we but, but we need to start. Well, I think we do need a complete budget. We need well, what I'm saying is, we. Budget. My point is, we can meet more than once between now and next meeting. I can meet once. Well, it only takes three. But it only takes right, three. You're right. You're right. But you should be able to do all of that in one meeting. Mm -hmm. It may take you all night, but you should be able to get it. Has all the departments given? I don't know if they've been asked for one or not. No, they have. Would, not would Monday the twenty fourth give you a little bit of time to? Yeah, I'd be happy to accommodate Monday the twenty fourth. Do you have to pay any bills between now and then? I do, absolutely. On purchase orders that y'all approved earlier, and then we'll have some more in public works. So on um, expenditures that have already been incurred on behalf of the town. Uh, is that going to be a during the day or a during the evening? Whatever y'all prefer. Y'all tell me, I'm right. It'll have to be evening. What okay. is on Monday? You want to do 5 30 that Monday? Monday? Yes. That'd be all right. So I make a motion that we establish uh, uh, March the 24th at 5 30 for a budget motion. meeting. Second. Second. Any more discussion? Is this going to be. Uh, like an executive session? No. 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 So this is a special, special meeting with one agenda. So far. So far. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? <coughs> Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Jackie? Yes. There's anything you want on that budget, I suggest you see Mary right away so she can get that on there. If there's something you want on there, don't want on there. Please clarify for me our, this is going to sound really ignorant, but I'm just going to go for it. Are we on the current fiscal year's budget or the next fiscal year? Current. Current. Thank you. Okay. Item number 22, discussion and action on sharing of information among board members. I've got that on there because when I go to the mailbox, I see mail in everybody's box. Everybody's got different mail. And theoretically, all of us council members are equal. And so for me, it's important that we all know what's going on. Uh, for instance, I saw an envelope in your mailbox that said Department of Transportation. 
Well, I have no idea what we're getting from the Department of Transportation. And as a council member, I think it's important that we're all informed on everything that comes into the city. So I got a letter from the Department of Transportation. I don't know what it was. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's important that we share that information. I'm looking in other people's mailboxes. Sometimes, well, if I open can, that, Goni, if you I can call it what you want Goni, to, Goni, Goni, the Department of Transportation has mm -hmm. to tell someone what's going on. Right. And if it got put in my box, it was only because someone chose to put right. it in my box. Or and, maybe and, had my name. And, and I don't care whose box listen, it's in, but it I needs to be shared. It, whatever that pertains to, I give it to either Mary or Liddell. Mm -hmm. I normally never leave the city hall with it. And, and my point is. I think it's important that we all know what well, that is. From the Department of Public Transportation, sometimes like it's, it's, it's probably garbage. I can watch that. Oh, it was, no, 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 it was garbage. It was I trash off. It was trash off day. I put it in the trash off day because I've been over the last year. We don't trash off days anymore. But I'll be glad to give that. There's like several copies in there that are still in there because it wasn't important to me. And that's fine, too. And I'm not talking about that, but I'm saying it's important that we share information amongst ourselves. Well, I forwarded that on to because she's in charge of that. Well, welcome to, to the trash shop. They do have to put in some eight boxes. Okay, anything yes, else? Item number 23. Well, number 23 in business. Item number 24. I make a motion to adjourn. We got a motion. Second. Second in order. Motion. Ronnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Regina? Yes. Jackie? Yeah. yeah. Close meeting order for the town board trustees and the town hand public works. I just want supper made. Supper. I know it. Don't let me bring you $1,165.73. You'll see some additional line items below, including interest income, but an item that's a little bit new to you, the next to last item, which is called transfers out. What those, that amount represents is the amount of money that we're required to transfer into restricted reserve accounts based on the, in this case, the water treatment plant project, which I discussed earlier. Some of those represent debt service or sinking transfers, and some represent depreciation reserve or asset replacement reserves. That, that amount is um, certainly more than we have to do monthly. That just represents my getting some accounts sort of even out into the place where the USDA would like to see them. And this money that you're setting aside here does not go to the payment of the loan. No, that is actually listed on the first page, Rhonda, by capital outlay, $12,740. You see that every month it's, it's automatically drafted. But I did email you today the total amount that's basically consumed by reserves and loan drafts on that particular project per month. I haven't had a chance to look at emails today. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Mary? And this is just a one-time? No, actually, you're going to see that every month, but that's not the, that's a much longer, larger amount than you'll typically see. I was having to do some catch-ups there. So if you take this amount mm -hmm. of 12740 and then you also take the total that I emailed you today, uh -huh. the difference, which is going to be about 4500 is what you're going to see there. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. No, thank you, Mary. Item number five, approve rejected consent agenda consisting of the minutes of the meeting held in February. Mm -hmm. I make, make a motion to approve. Yeah, a motion. A second. No, a second. Any more discussion? Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Item number six, 
Associates of River Jack Public Works Purchase Orders. I make a motion to a motion. Second. And a second. Any more discussion? Vote. Donnie. Yes. Donna. Yes. Rhonda. Yes. Dana. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Item number seven. River Jack Payne invoice TAL 070329 to Malberger Brawley in the amount of $1,818. $18.01 for water treatment plant distribution improvements. I make a motion to approve. A oh, motion. I second that motion. Any more discussion? But Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Jana? Yes. Jackie? Yes. Item number eight, discussion action concerning employee leave requests for time to clarify who approved supervisor leave. No, I think Rhonda actually. got that clarified already. Yes. Item number nine, discussion action on spending, hiring, and salary freeze. Do we have a motion? Well, since I know how to go, I might as well say no action. No action on item number nine. Item number 10, discussion action on meeting to establish budget and goal for 2014. That would be already. Motion. Do we have a motion? I make a motion. Mm -hmm. Motion. 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 Any more discussion? Donnie? Uh, yes. Donna? Yes. Yes. Gina. Yes. Jackie. Yes. Item number 11. Approve Jackie into executive session under Title 21, Section 307B1, discussing employment, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, the resignation of an individual salary public officer, <coughs> employee contract clerk Mary Timmons, violation of Oklahoma Open Meeting Acts, salary structure of employees. Donnie, do you want to go there again? I don't think we need to. We have no action on item number 11. Item number 12, approve reject exiting from executive session as money. That's number 13. Uh, 14, discussion action on acquiring a truck for maintenance. I've got that on there. I've got a, a deal where I can get us a free pickup. If, if we get on a list to get a free pickup, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, I talked with the, it's BP and, and Wilberton. And uh, all we have to do is write them a letter. I already did that. Uh, she didn't act like she knew it. So we've already sent a letter and we don't have an answer yet. Did you you send, I sent one. I sent one last January and I sent one this January. Okay. She, I told her where I was from and she didn't recognize it. So. So you want Liddell to uh, maybe send you. a copy of the letter or send a new letter? No, she's already sent it. No sense sending a copy. So she can find out if the answer was yes or no. Well, they put it on a list. You just on the list. list. Yeah, you don't know how far or how close. So you just want to check it out and see. There's no sense checking okay. it out either. So nothing on item 14. Item number 15, discussion action on monthly meeting with Melbourne to Raleigh engineering contractors. I've got that on there. I think it's important that we have monthly construction meetings here on out. I mean, that's standard. Is that between you and well, it's, it's Melbourne Raleigh engineering contractors? And, and the contractor between Rhonda and I and, and, and uh, they Dale and, and, and well, but that's a different. I mean, a construction meeting is, is standard operating procedure, and, and, okay. and we should be doing that so we so don't have all these questions here at this meeting. You guys can figure that out when you all do. You just want the board to okay that? Yeah, basically. So make a motion. I make a motion that we get with uh, Dale here with uh, Mel Berger Brawley and, and, and establish a date for monthly construction meetings. We have a motion to allow Donnie and Rhonda to meet with Mel Berger Brawley Engineering Contractors once a month. We have a second. Any more discussion? We'll go to Rhonda. Yes. Second. Yes. Donnie? Yes. Donna? Yes. Rhonda? Yes. Gina? Yes. Jackie? Yes. I don't know, 16. Either, either, either one of us. Just contact me. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, if you want to talk, I mean, Liddell can always get messages. Actually, Rhonda's over that department, so I suggest just you have my that way you know there won't be a communication gap there. If you just contact her, I'm sure she'll communicate with her. I'll contact the contractor. That way you'll know. Thank you. Okay. Item number 16, approve reject setting water plant labor rate at $12 an hour, excluding plant supervisor. Let's table this after we have our budget meeting. We have no action on 16. Thank you. Item number 17, new business. Do you want me to continue to sign the checks, the checks without a budget? Yes. And I need a motion on that. Please. Why? I make a motion that we continue to sign the check to conduct business on business. Without a budget. Without a budget. You got you got some bills that have to be paid this month. Well, it, 
Do you want that? Well, if that doesn't you got to clarify that. Because I don't want to no. sound with Donnie not approved. No, it's, I won't. it's in the minutes right now mm -hmm. that me and Gina signed those checks. Do you want to continue to do that even though you don't have a budget? That's, it's not the budget per se, is, is whether it came before no, this board no, to be approved. We don't have a budget. And so if I sign one check, it's the same for all of them. Do you can, want me to sign the checks until we get a budget, or do you want to wait till after the budget before I sign any more checks? No, it's going to make it late. That's right. Second motion. motion. So we have a motion. Well, I'm saying she can go ahead and pay what we approve. Just making sure, I guess. I gotta be yeah. Something. Without without a motion. Well, if, if no, she feels I'm more comfortable sorry. with board approval on a motion. There's been questions asked, and you know that. Right. So do you or do you not want me to sign the checks? As approved by the board. If the board has approved purchase orders, and so you want me to sign no checks other than purchase orders? No, that's not what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. Not what I'm saying. Right. Okay. What I'm saying is that you have purchase orders that have been approved. You need to sign those. Any any employee checks, right. salaries, and things right. of that nature. Yes. Anything dealing with taking care of taxes and things like that. Yes. So everything we've already signed, we continue to sign. But yes. We've never signed anything other than those things you just discussed. So okay. So we have a motion and a second. I just don't want to be in violation of the Open Meeting Act. We have any more discussion? Sorry, guys. Any more discussion? But Donnie? I'll give you this leeway until we have our budget meeting. Yes. You can sign. Oh, thank you, Big Dad. That makes me feel good. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Is it Ron? Ron, Ron yes. 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 Thank you for that clarity. I don't know, right? I make a motion we adjourn. We a motion. Did y'all get my purchase order? Crazy, so I'll sign that check tomorrow.